Hey kids, this is Myra Mansfield at Kairos, and I'm gonna have another Bible lesson for you today. And I've got some girls here in the room with me and they're gonna be full of questions. So we're gonna ha be having questions too. So the, the story I wanna tell you today is about Rebecca. But you know what? I don't wanna just tell you stories. I want you to understand why the story in the Bible is important for you. Okay, so did you know that this is called a Bible? Everybody has one in their house, it's just about. And the, a Bible is looks like one book, right? But what you may not know that is actually 66 books. Can you tell me? 66 books. 66. All little books that somebody took and typed them up and put them all in the same binding. Probably, if it, like 66 Bibles? No, 66 little books, and they all have their own name. So the name of the book I'm gonna be teaching out of today is Genesis. The next book in the Bible after it, we need to memorize these. The next book is called Exodus. The next book is called Leviticus. And the next book is called Numbers. And then it goes on and on. It has all these books have a name. And that helps us to find what we're looking for when we have our Bible and we want to look for something. We can find it because we know what the book and the chapter number. Do you have a question? I have a prediction about the book of Raven. Okay. I think it's about being independent because you talked about it uh, the other day. About exactly. being independent? Like, Say it yeah. again. I think like the story is like about like talking about being independent. I, I don't know why I just do. Okay. Yeah, I have a question. Huh. So maybe I should just type in my questions and then. Yes, I. I can't read them from here, but you can that's tell hard. it to me in a little bit. <clears throat> so that's very interesting, Kirsten, that you said you think it's about being independent because really. Even though all of us have different gifts and we need each other, we def definitely need each other. But at the same time, sometimes you might be believe something and nobody else around you believes it, or you might feel like God told you to do something and nobody else around you agrees with you, or they might not care. And you have to do it on your own, right, Kirsten? Mm -hmm. You have to just go ahead and do it. You can't wait for people to agree with you. Now, Abraham, who is uh, the granddaddy in this story, or the, he's actually the daddy, um, he had to obey God even when nobody believed that he should. They thought he was crazy. They said, what are you doing? He said, I'm gonna, God told me to get my family and leave this city. And he had to go out into the desert and follow around what God told him to do. And it was a big, long journey. And he actually never, ever in his whole life really reached the end of the journey because God was using him to leave that place where they didn't believe in God. They believed in idols. Were you here when I taught about idols? No. Uh, that's when you have a thing that you believe has power. Okay? But, so anyway... He did that. He was ob obedient to God, and he left the city, and he went out on his own, and God t said, everywhere you walk, I'm going to make your children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren have this land. And so he, he obeyed all by himself, even though he didn't have a lot of people in agreement. Well, he had a baby whose name was Isaac. Do you know somebody named Isaac? Mm -hmm. You know anybody named I'm Isaac? I'm watching a YouTuber. YouTuber named Isaac, okay. But I don't know anybody. Okay. So, uh, so anyway, Isaac was their baby. And when Isaac got grown up, he didn't really get married young like a lot of people. He, he stayed with his mom and helped take care of his mom. And then... When his mom died, he still wasn't married. And so his daddy, Abraham, said, we got to get him married. He cannot 
lived his whole life without a wife, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and so Abraham, this is the story. Can you look at me while I tell you the story? So Abraham told one of the men who worked for him. He said, I don't want my son to marry these women who live around this area where, where this land is because they don't love God. I want my son to have a wife who loves God. <clears throat> so I want, he told his, he told his man who worked for him, who called a servant, to go all the way back across the desert, that whole long trip they made, go all the way back across the desert and get a wife from his other family that it left behind and he so the servant the man said oh, that's a big chore for me what if I go all the way over there and the woman won't come with me now wouldn't you be scared if somebody said this is what you need to do for an important person what if the president said Kirsten I need you to go back down to your state, Tennessee, and make sure all the people in the whole state vote for such and such. They vote for, well, Trump is our current president. Okay, let's just use him for example. <clears throat> vote for President Trump. Wouldn't you think, how can I make sure all those people are going to vote for Trump? That would seem like a huge job, wouldn't it? So... It was kind of that servant felt like, oh, this is just such a big responsibility. I gotta pick somebody's wife. And so the servant said to said to Abraham, Well, let let him come with me. Let the son come with me. <laughs> you know, he was thinking, let the son choose his own wife. <laughs> and Abraham said, Nope, you can't take my son with you. You have to do this on your own. So the servant said, Well, what if she won't come? And he said, well, if, if she doesn't come, then that's okay. You don't have to do this you don't, or released from your um, task. Okay. Got a question? What the hell? Like, he didn't really need one, did he? Yes, he did. Why? Need a wife? Because otherwise he was going to be alone for the rest of his life, and that would not be good. Yeah, but like he didn't need one if he really hey. didn't want one. He did want one. That reminds me, on this game, Built Legos, I'll probably build my own set of the story. But, um, so the first one was the election this year. And they made Trump look mad. And they made Biden look happy. So okay. it's weird. Um, that. Okay. <laughs> that reminds okay. Me. Um, so, Liv, girls, I want you to just try to concentrate on the story I'm telling yeah. you, okay? So, let me tell you how old Isaac was when this happened. He was 37 years old. Hey! You know somebody who's 37? Dad. Yeah, your daddy's 37 right now. So, what if your daddy had never got married, and he never had any children, and he was just all by himself still? <gasps> That's why you have to have, that's why it's important to get married and have children. Because your children are what makes the future happen. You, it's really important to find the person that God has for you to marry and to marry that one person, stay with that person, and have some babies. So that's the future of, uh, of our lives. Okay, so listen. <clears throat> so the servant said, okay, I'll do it. And back in that day, they had this this um, way they made a promise. So today, if somebody said, I promise, they just say the words, right? Well, Is they there, do a pinky promise. They do a pinky promise. Sometimes you do a pinky promise. What does that mean to you if you do a pinky promise? Like, if you I will do it. I will keep the promise. Back then, this is what they did. They took their hand and they put it under somebody's thigh. See here? Look. See my thigh right here? It would be like if somebody came up and they said, I promise. And they put their hand under my thigh. That means I promise I will keep the promise. That's okay. weird. I promise I will keep the promise. 
And so that was back what they did back then. Maybe you do Pinky Promise now. Back then they did thighs, and maybe they would think that Pinky Promise is weird. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so that's what the, the servant did. He put his hand under the man's thigh, under Abraham's thigh, and guess what he did? He went out. Abraham was very rich. He had all this land and all these animals, so many you can't even imagine how many. And the servant took 10 camels. Do you know how big a camel is? Yeah. Have you ever seen a real camel? Yeah. Big. No, I like it's big. It's this big before its neck even starts. It's bigger than me. Yeah. Oh, it's very no, big. No, I seen a camel. We went to a zoo and they had so many camels we could even feed them. Good. We wanted. Awesome. But I didn't want it. So this man, he got 10 camels. Now, let me tell you something about camels. They can drink a lot of water. You know why? Because they are going to be walking all the way across the desert where there is no water. Is there water in the desert? No. No water in the desert. So they're going to be walking all the way across the desert with these camels, and the camels have to have enough water to make it all the way across, or at least until the next place they find water. So, so the servant starts out, and he puts lots of presents all over the camels. He makes those camels carry so many presents to the girl who he is going to get who will marry the son Isaac. Now, what if you're the girl? What if you're the girl and you just live in your house and you know that someday your daddy's going to find a husband? Because back then, daddies and moms had to decide who you get to marry. And you know what? I kind of think that's a good idea today because dads and moms, they know how, how marriage feels and everything. And so moms and dads should approve of who you marry so they should get to you know understand God's plan for your life too your mom and dad should so they can tell when it's the right person or when it's a trick now listen to this Kirsten mm -hmm. remember those signs over there on the wall that you were talking about earlier yeah well that is another lesson I taught one time about how the devil and bad people can trick you. Okay? Now, one time, this was very sad. It's in the book called First Kings. Remember, there's 66 books in here. One of the books is called First Kings. In First Kings 13, there's a story where a man who loved God, he was a prophet, but you know what? He lied to a young prophet and tricked him. And the young prophet did what the old prophet said, even though God had told him something different. And the young prophet died because of it. And there's another time in the book of Esther, Esther 3, where a king's advisor tricked all the people in the whole country into not liking the Jew Jewish people. And Queen Esther saved them. You see how people keep tricking? The devil came to Jesus Wait. when Jesus was starting his ministry, and the devil tried to trick Jesus into disobeying God. But there's more books. There's only, I thought there was only one book of Esther. Like That's right. One of the books is named Esther. Okay, because I had that one when I was in Georgia then. Yeah, okay. And did you name our mom after Esther? I did. So... <clears throat> what if this king, King Abraham, the Bible actually does later call them kings, because in that day they were like a king. And um, so his servant went across the desert and brought all kinds of presents. Now listen, this is important. I need y'all to listen to this story. So, because it's just now starting. He gets across the desert and he has... Ten camels with all kinds of wealth, all kinds of presents, all kinds of money, all kinds of good clothes, all kinds of gifts to give to this young lady. And plus he's got all his food that he's going to need as he makes his long journey. So he finally reaches the city that Abraham told him to go to. And when he first gets there, 
This is what he says. I want you all to repeat this after me. He says to God, he says, God, if let it happen that the woman that comes out to get water out of this well, because there was a well right there. So let the wa woman who comes out to get water out of this well, I'm going to ask her for a cup of water to drink. And let the one that you choose for my master's son, Isaac, tell me these words. Now listen, y'all. If you talk to God like this and you say, God, so that I know that I'm doing the right thing, let a person say such and such words. That's what he was doing. He said, let them say... I'll give you a drink, and I'll give a drink for all your ten camels. Could I get you to do that right now? Would you mind to go up to the kitchen and bring back enough water to fill up this whole room? Would you mind? Go back and forth and get all enough water to, uh, bottles of water to fill up this whole room? It's, it's up in the ground. ground. What? It's up in the ground. It's in the ground? It would soak. It would soak the ground as it would. What did you say? That would be impossible. You think that would be almost an impossible thing? To get that much water all in one place? So I did not know what I was on. I was listening, and now look. Mm -hmm. So, so the girl that comes out and says this, let her be the one that's the wife. That means... No other girl can come out and say it. If God is going to be involved in this, that means that God is going to make her say those words and nobody, no other girl is going to be able to say it. And she cannot not say it. She is going to have to say his words. Okay? So, it, the Bible says that he didn't even finish saying that out of his mouth. He had not even finished saying let her say, I shall give your camels drink until a young girl came out. She's just a little older than you, Kirsten, probably just about 14 or so, came out. Her name was Rebecca, but it's pronounced Rivka in Hebrew. You say it like Rivka. So Rivka came out. Right when he's saying this to God, he says, God, let this happen. And right then, Rebecca came out. She was born to that family. The girl that came out was the exact girl that he came all the way across the desert to get. It was not another girl. He didn't have to sit there all day long waiting through lots of girls to see which one it was. It was the exact first one that came out was the one. And she said... I will give you a drink, and I will give a drink to all your camels. Now, remember how much I told you camels drink? Lots of water. This girl had her pail, dipping it down in a well, and getting water, and doing it again, and bringing more water, and doing it again, and bringing more water, and doing it again, and bringing more water. Now, look at this right here. This is something like they had. It was a, like a pitcher, and, and she had to put it on ropes, and they let it down into the water until it gets full, and then they pull the rope back up so that it comes out. You might have seen a well before. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then she would dump the well like this, and then she would do it again. And then she had to do it again. Look at me, how much exercise. Do it again. Get it down, pull the ropes, dump it in the feeding trough. Put it back down, get it full, pull the ropes, here, I want you all to do this for the rest of the day we're here, okay? Stand there and pretend like you're doing this, okay? I'm just joking. <laughs> but, wait a minute, that's what it was really like. She had to keep doing it and keep doing it to give all ten camels a drink. So the servant was so amazed that God made the first girl that came out be the one that said the words, and then she sat there and she worked so hard to feed his camels. Now that was really pretty smart of that servant because they wanted someone who would work hard. They didn't want to have a wife 
who was just kind of got lazy and wanted somebody else to take care of him all the time and just sit around saying, bring me this and bring me that. No, they wanted somebody who would work and boy, did they find a girl who would work hard. Well, listen, that's not the end of the story. Because now, remember what I said about the daddy? The servant had to see if the daddy would let the girl come with him all the way back across the desert. They would, the daddy would never see his daughter again. She would be gone for the rest of their lives because if she went with Abraham's servant, she would probably never come back for a visit. They would probably never come across the desert to see her. And so it would take some convincing. The people would really need to know that this was a man that came across the desert and wasn't going to trick them. What would you think if some man showed up at your house and said, I'm here to marry Kirsten? They better have 10 cars lined up with all kinds of presents, right? <laughs> I'm just teasing you, but well, really, really, that would prove that, I mean, that could help, but at the same time, it could be a trick. How do you know? Remember what I told you just a minute ago about how some people trick people in, in the book of Esther? One of the king's important people tricked all the people into not liking Queen Esther's people. People could trick people. So this guy could have been a trick. He could have been tricking to say, give me your daughter. I'm going to take him to a very wealthy, your, your, uh, your brother in the, in the country way over there. What's your question? I don't get it. Like, no, I don't. You said there was going to be an angel in the story. And I didn't hear an angel at all. Oh, look at you, girl. You're right. Shit. That's exactly right. You're right. I left that out because really what, what the servant said was, let an angel go before me. It says, the Lord God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my relatives and spoke to me and swore to me saying, I will give this land to your seed. That means I'm going to take you to a new land and I'm going to make all of that new land belong to you and your family. And it says, he will send his angel in front of you, my servant, and you will find that wife. You are so right, Kennedy. I left out the angel. That was an important part of it. An angel actually was going in front of the servant and his ten camels all the way down there. And when he got there, no wonder the girl came out that was the right one at first because an angel was involved. Okay. The angels around us better be here. They are. <laughs> they listen. And they do things for God for us. Because they, because God loves them. Probably can't us. see them, but they are on this table. They are. They are in this room. You. They are in this room. Yes, right they now. are. Angels are in this room. They are everywhere, and they do help God. They do help. When God wants something special to happen in our lives, I think that's a great prayer. God, send your angel in front of me to open the doors that I need open. God, send your angel in front of me to make. The right people come into my life at the right time. God, make an angel go before me, in front of me, and help me overcome my enemies. People who challenge me, people who do bad things behind my back. That's a good prayer, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Let's say it together. God, send an angel in front of me to make the right things happen. Make the right things happen. Yes. And God send an angel in front of me to make me protected and safe, right? So guess what? When that when the uh, when the servant got there, he had to see if the daddy would let the girl go. And so you know what he did? I'm telling you, this is important. This is what he did. He 
went in to where the daddy was and he told the daddy this. Can you listen to me? Okay. It says, then the girl ran and she told her mom, hey mom. And the brother was listening. His name was Laban. He was listening. And she said, there's a man that came to the well and he told me that he came all the way across the desert to get me to marry Isaac. And so she told her family and they said, well, bring him in. Bring the man, that servant, bring him off to a house. And so they brought the servant and all his camels and they brought him to the house and they fed the camels. And then they said, come in here. And the man went in and he said, I am Abraham's servant and the Lord has blessed Abraham very greatly and made him very rich. He has all kinds of sheep and all kinds of cattle, all kinds of silver and gold and servants and, and maids and camels and donkeys. And his wife, Sarah, has had a child named Isaac. And Abraham told me to come and get a wife. And I told the Lord, may the woman who's going to be his wife come out to the well and say, I will give you a drink and your camels too. Now, it was important that the servant told Laban, the daddy, all the whole story. It's important that we tell what God is doing in our lives. It's important for us to tell the details. We don't need to just say, oh, God provided a hundred dollars I needed. No, we need to tell the story. How did it happen? It happened because if somebody said, I need a hundred dollars, God, and then I went to a certain place and I met a certain person, and they gave me a hundred dollars, and it was the answer to my prayer. We need to tell the whole story. It's called a testimony. We need to tell the whole story to the people so they can hear how we relate to God. How do we talk to God? How does God answer to us? How do we hear God? What does God say to us? And what's He like? We've got to convey to other people our experiences with God so they understand that God gets involved with our lives. He gets involved. He loves us so much that he actually comes into our lives and gets involved and makes people and places and things all line up to give us a blessed life. So, Rebecca, they said to her, do you want to go? Now, that was a big decision for her. Like I said, she would never see her family again. So that was a big decision. But you know what she said? I want to go. She knew from the testimony of how miraculous it was that she walked out of her daddy's house as she did every single day. She had her pot. She carried it down to the well. And she found a man that wasn't there usually. And he said, I came to get a wife, and you did exactly what I prayed. You got the water, and you fed all my camels. And she heard that about her own self. She heard how she did what God wanted her to do, and that there was a wonderful husband waiting for her. And so she said, yes, I will go. And so... The, man, the servant said, well, let's go. And they said, please stay a few days to let her be able to get her things together and we'll send her maids with her and, and we can get her ready and she can say goodbye to us. And he said, please make it fast. I need to get on back to my master. And so she made it fast and she left with him and she went all the way back across the, the desert. And guess where? She was at going across the desert. She was riding on a camel. She was up on the top of that camel all the way across the desert. Have you ever ridden a horse that feels like this for a long time? Because the horse is clump, clump, clump. And that's how she was. She was on the camel riding all the way across the desert. And as soon as she saw a tent ahead, and she said to the servant, Who is that man? 
and the servant said, that is your husband. She was so excited, she jumped off the camel, and she started running to him. She was so excited. She wasn't going to wait till clomp, 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 all the way over there. She just wanted to meet her husband, and she was so happy. And then they got married, and there's a whole lot more that happened in that family that I've already told you some of the stories, and I'll tell you some more later. Anyway, I love you. Have a great day, a great week, and a great new year. Bye.